Okay, here we are once again at the 20-sided store in Brooklyn, New York on November 3rd, 2013 for their monthly tournament, first Sunday of every month. Sign up start at noon, game start at 1. Awesome store. Look, the lighting in the store is so good. Look how nice the videos look compared to uh, the videos at the other locations in which we play Netrunner. Really nice black table that my new black sleeves blend right into, so you can't really tell what the hell's going on. At least uh, Fedora's got a nice Season 2 champion playmat going on, so, you know, that'll make uh, his wizard cards easy to see, and my Wayland cards will be totally hidden and secretive. This game, I mean, if you thought the previous game uh, that we just played where I cheated was exciting, this game is way more exciting than that if that was even possible this may even be in like one of the five best games of netrunner i have ever played in my life it may just be one of the best games of netrunner i ever played in my life period um really excited about what you're about to see here lots of really interesting and crazy plays that i've never seen before in my life People figuring out what to do in different situations they've never seen before. Or not figuring out what to do. Uh, a lot of teeth skinning. A lot of other craziness. So, shuffling up real hard. Black sleeves on black sleeves. This is not going to go well. Don't steal my agendas. Okay. Cut them cards. Draw them cards. Now, plugging into cyberspace, I will now create a net for you to run right into. Let us run that net. I think I see some ice in my hand off the screen. Am I mulliganing? I am mulliganing! Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That is not a good sign. The mulligan. I purposely put some more ice in this deck because I wasn't... Uh, you know, I was playing Go Fish or whatever with it, you know, just doing test draws, and I was not drawing enough starting turn ice. So I put in a little bit more turn one ice so that, uh, you know, I wouldn't have to mulligan. Guess I didn't draw any. <laughs> or at least I didn't, you know. Maybe I drew one in some agendas, who knows. Maybe it was a two archer starting hand or something like that. I'm trying to remember. Whatever it was, I didn't like it. <clears throat> so, let's see what happens this time. I'm gonna shuffle extra hard. First game didn't take that long, but uh, you know, tournaments have time limits here. Okay. The cutting. The dealing. And let the games begin! He's using those uh, counters for his uh, wizard credits. He'll turn them from red to blue when he trashes something, and then he'll turn them red again uh, when his turn starts. Okay, so it doesn't look like we got a lot of ice there. So let's try this, Jackson. This is your job, right? You're supposed to take care of this turn one shitty hand situation, right? Let's do it. Let's do it. Draw two. Draw two, Jackson. Let's do what you do. All right. Did I get ice? Did I get ice? What did I get? What did I get? I see at least one ice over there. I got one click left. What am I going to do? I see government contracts. <laughs> I see Thomas Haas. What else do I see? Got to pick some cards to put in the trash. I had a mandatory draw. I drew two. I drew two. So that's five. I got ten cards in my hand. I think I have to put five in the trash. If I'm not mistaken. Oh, no. I played Jackson Howard. So I should have to put four in the trash. Uh... Or three? Why would it be three? 
Did I just cheat again? <laughs> okay, so let's see. Start with five. Play Jackson. No, mandatory draw. That's six. Jackson, Jackson. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Seven, eight, nine, ten. But one, Jackson's on the table. That's nine. Put four in the trash. I think I took four. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I think all somehow all four of the archives cards went back into R and D. <laughs> oh, this makes up for it. The empty first turn. Oh my god! I can't believe I just noticed that. Oh my god! I'm the worst player ever. I'm gonna kill myself. That's a serious. That's not like the two credits. That's like, yeah. If I, if I, you didn't recognize it, no one recognized it. I did until this moment. Well, Jackson did what he does. He dug up some ice. Theoretically, he should have been able to look at one card in archives. I guess he probably looked at a non-agenda. It wouldn't have been whatever. I cheated. Um, um, it's the end of Netrunner, as we know it. Install, install, hedge fund. He runs, he sets up Katie. My hostile takeover. I got my W money. And besides that mistake, I swear to you, the rest of this game is just amazing. Oh my god. Is that really? Maybe I drew, and then drew two? I... I guess that maybe. Why would I do that? Or maybe I drew two and then drew one. That could have been. Uh, uh, someone check the video. <laughs> I can't rewind it. I'm already dubbing it over in real time. Okay. Setting up the remote. Need some room for my money. Yeah, I like to keep my money up front so people can see it. A lot of people keep their money in the way back in a pile. It's like, no, 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 look, here's my money right up front. You know how much I got. Oh, that parasite. Get away from my nigga. Oh, and he's got a grimoire, so... All right, that enigma isn't going anywhere. What a waste of three credits. Let's replace it. Install. Install. For a credit. And... Draw. He runs R&D. Put on the rook Do you see that coming? You did see that coming in the whaling deck. Whaling deck cut you up. Cut you so bad. I wish I not cut you so bad. Oh, I like to see those cards go away. Especially that medium. And the deja vu. And ice wall. Perfect. If you run here, you get cut. And you can't get in either. Imagine if there's a card that said do three net damage on the run for five credits. That is a good card. But I have it in two separate eyes, which makes it even better. All right. Let's get working on my remote. Put another ice over there. Hedge fund, get the monies back. And draw. So I think I, the reason I'm drawing here is to dilute hand agendas. Because <laughs> I think I still have some. I think I have some in there, despite Jackson Howard. And I'm not yet ready to work on those agendas. Parasite again. He does not like my Neural Katana. And I guess because he's got a bad pub, he figures a corroder can walk through my ice wall. All right, install advance, advance. Yeah, you want a you want a parasite over there? Well, it's pressure time. Run this. Yep, install, install clone chips. He can get any program he wants in his whole deck, but there's two ice. Run. How many credits do you have? What's in your trash? Another self-modifying code case. He can get any program he wants. How many credits do you have? Yeah, I'm going to res that archer. Can you do anything about it? Can you do anything about it? Down to nothing.
Oh, he uh, he forgot to put a parasite counter, a uh, virus counter on the parasite at the beginning of the turn. The one that was there already was from Grimoire. Um, so my Neural Katan is close to dead, but he's letting the archer hit. So I completely forgot that I can hit the parasite with the archer. He reminds me. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, we're getting rid of that too. Ooh. It's weird because hitting a parasite with program trashing is something that I actually think about kind of often. Like, yeah, if they're parasiting you, you just trash the parasites before they kill the ice. You'll be safe. And the one time that it actually happens, I get a chance to do it. Totally forgot. Okay. So now that I have this archer res, let's score. Priority wreck. Another archer on HQ. You can't get in nowhere. Nowhere can you get in. I am going to get some agendas and score them behind my archer. That's right. That's right. Ah, I can draw safely from R&D into HQ. I have a nice tunnel going on here. Yep, look, install. And take some credits. I can take ca cards out of R&D. Can't get them. Cards in HQ. Can't get them. Cards in the remote. Can't get them. Just got to pick them up, put them down, and dance. The most basic Netrunner play. Straight out of Corset. Look, I don't think there's another. Oh, no. No, no, no. Not another one. Oh, my God. No. I paid a whole point for that. Kill the other one. The other one I priority wrecked. Don't, don't kill the one that I spent the hostile takeover on. All right. Digging the moon for some money. So I guess if I can get a Hadrian's or something with my moon money, it's okay if the archer goes down. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. He might fem. He's got one in there. It's only one influence. And he's playing an awfully shapery wizard. <laughs> Clone ship, self-modifying code. Pretty interesting. Most people play Shaper and bring in the Anarch cards. Playing Anarch, bringing in the Shaper cards. Not the worst idea. Not the worst idea. Okay. So, my Archer is going down. I'll just wait and then clear virus counters. That way I'll save my Archer and I'll get to score something else behind it. Uh-oh, a data sucker. So, if he runs Archives three times... He's already got one counter from the Grimoire. If he runs Archives three times, that'll be four. So, next turn... So, he can basically run Archives a bunch, uh, next, you know, and then run the Archer. It'll be gone way soon. Too soon. Too soon. Yeah, I'm counting... How many times he has to run. Uh, so yeah, he can take out the archer this like next turn easily. I gotta do something. Clearing virus counters might not even help. So we're going to install an ice on the archives. That will keep him from building up virus counters from his grim, uh, data cycle. There'll just be one more on Parasite. Uh, can't really run anywhere to fill the data cycle up beyond one. Archer is six minus three. He'll need two more than he's already got to uh, kill my archer off on the next turn. As long as I can keep him out of archives. Okay, he runs as a Jackson Howard there, which I use. Yeah, I didn't even see that get installed there because uh, I'm just going to put back two hedge funds and a mystery card. Um. Which I think the mystery card was another spare melange, I think, because I had one in my hand. And then I, I already had one on the table. If you didn't notice, my Wayland is not the Scorchy kind. Which I love, because everyone just starts installing their Plaskreeds, and they don't run unless it's super safe, right? And there's no way for him to know it's not the Scorchy kind, because the only influence he's seen in Neural Katana, and um, 
you know, he hasn't seen anything in HQ and hardly any cards in R&D. He's only seen what I showed him. Which are all perfectly, you know, reasonable cards to find in a Scorching deck. They're way, you know, this is what Wayland plays. Okay, so, I had an Enigma there. I blocked it. Awesome. He lost his click. He lost all kinds of stuff. So now, I have one more turn. Right? I'm thinking he can't get in. The Parasite will go to four. The Archer will be at two. The Data Sucker will be at one. So that'll only be five. He'll be one short of doing anything about the Archer. So I'm going to install. And then next turn, I'm going to clear Virus Counters. And then I'm going to try to score Agendas. All right. See, only four virus on the parasite and one data sucker. I'll clear next turn. Oh shit, it's an ice carver! Oh no, the surprise ice carver! My archer, no! Oh, that was the worst. <laughs> if there isn't an ice carver already on the table, assume they're holding one. He goes in. Chimera. I'm gonna sentry it. Keep you out. Uh oh. Clone chip. Self modifying code. Uh oh. Uh oh. Mimic. Uh oh. He's in with the bad pub. It's Simone! Wizard credits trash that. Whew. Yeah, I was putting the Simone down, and then I was going to clear, and then I was going to install Advance Advance with Simone. Boy, am I glad I didn't drop the agenda in there. At that exact moment, then clear. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Whew. If I didn't have that Simone in my hand, I might have made a big mistake. But at least I made him spend a whole bunch of resources. He used up his only clone chip and such uh, to get a Mimic on the table. Well, a Mimic helps him, right? My Neural Katana is now shut down. Um, but he's still two breakers short of getting through a Chimera. Or one AI breaker short. And you put down a Dar when you're in. Um, okay, so put another ice in front of my Chimera to bolster up this remote, which is used to be a lock-solid remote and has now been decimated <laughs> into a very measly remote that is high maintenance. Not a big fan of Chimera. People play a zero-strength Atman, throw your Chimeras out in the garbage. They just become a liability. Where you got to spend two credits every time. Right? People play a Darwin or a Crypto, you just forget it. I just have one Chimera in there, and the only reason it's in there is if you can perhaps... They're, they're really good in the early game, especially with Wayland who has money. You know, you can probably sneak an agenda out behind a Chimera in the way early game. Um, why didn't I throw it out at this point? Uh, because there's still a chance that... Um, uh, so this is the Ice Wall. You know, he only has the one breaker, right? Can I? Can he get the other two? Can he really get a, you know... I haven't seen an AI breaker from him yet. All right, he's clone chipping... Corroder. I guess he's clone chipping self-modifying Corroder. And he's got a gin, so he definitely has memory uh, for all that nonsense. Okay, and then he hits... Ye old enigma, which he still can't do anything about. And I had an atlas back there. Yep. So by having, you know, ice wall, enigma, um, and chimera, right? It's like that'll really force you to get, you know, all three kinds. Oh, but now R and D is open to him because he has the corroder and the mimic. So. He went in and he took my, uh, my agenda. Two points. Right. R&D is wide open. I got to bolster that. I got my archer on HQ. <laughs> um, All right, let's bolster up R&D here. I have a nice, right? All right, there we go. Ice on the R&D. Don't run there. Don't run there. Score is five, two, three. I'm winning. That's cool. One agenda away. 
Okay. He's dropping the liberated accounts. I'm bean stalking. Looking for some agendas to score on my remote that's still safe with this Enigma. Has he used all three clone chips already? I mean, he's already got two. What are the, you know, so we've definitely seen two go by. So either he's used the third one or. Or um, the uh, the odds of him getting all three not too high. He doesn't really have any card draw help. I guess his Jin can get viruses. Or he's running R&D. I put a Bastion there because it was the only ice I had. <laughs> uh, but between his Data Sucker and his Corroder and his Ice Carver, uh, he's gonna get right through that. Right. But at least it'll cost him a little more to run R&D heavily. Oh crap. <laughs> Government contracts. It is now six to five. Oh boy, oh boy. This is this is bad news. Yep. Okay, he's gonna go some more. At least he doesn't have medium. At least he doesn't have medium. Thank for no medium. Oof. Oh boy. I gotta I gotta do something about his R and D running. What what can I do? Install advance advance. That's right. That's right. Can you, I dare you, can you run this? Can you get into this remote? You need to go get your YAG somehow. Right? I dare you to come into this remote. Can you get your YAG? Because right? even if you take the Enigma out with a Parasite, well, I'll just say code gate on my, uh, on my Chimera. So you need a code gate breaker, an AI breaker, and AI breakers are slow to set up. Uh, you know, you got to get a Darwin to two strength. You're gonna get a Crypsis, and I guess if he gets a Crypsis, he'll get a virus counter automatically with his Grimoire. But I'll have to click. So he has to get a Crypsis, install it, put a virus counter on it, and then run it. I guess that would get him in the server because he's oh, but he doesn't have that much money. He spent a lot of money, um, and Katie Jones is empty. So this is this agenda here is really. Uh, you know, pressuring him uh, on the remote. Oh, but he's got liberated accounts, so he has money. He doesn't need the Katie Jones money. Chakana! When have you ever seen that card? And it automatically gets a virus counter from Grimoire. I cannot believe it. Oh my god. And he can get into R&D, no problem. So he's liberated. Run R&D. I'm safe. And then he's going to run R&D again. And his Chikana is full. See, because I install Advance Advance, he's thinking that's a three-pointer for the win, right? Because if it was an Atlas, I wouldn't advance it. And, that's a t that, you know, it's he's seen three-pointers already. He's seen two three-pointers. There has to be another three-pointer somewhere. So when I install Advance Advance, he's thinking three-pointer. Three-pointers cost five to score. That fully loaded Chikana means I cannot score it this turn. Instead of trying to run the agenda... He ran R&D, which he was going to do anyway, and he also managed to delay me an entire turn, giving him another turn to find a way to get into the remote. So, advance, advance. <laughs> I will win next turn. Can you do anything about it now? <laughs> what can you do about it now? Well, you can get his money with liberated accounts. And... And... I've got two credits left. I can res my Chimera. Can you do anything about it? Can you get in the server? Can you get in? I'm gonna win this game! I'm gonna win this game! Chikana! Can you believe it? <laughs> What's he gonna do? Deja vu. Parasite. And is this a last click run? I think it's a last click run. 
So the parasite comes onto the enigma. He runs. He breaks my ice wall with his corroder bed pub for free. The ice carver plus grimoire plus parasite destroys the enigma. One, two, yep. I will not res the chimera. Oh, Jumbug! Ah, I win! Jumbug! Jumbug! The perfect Jumbug! Oh, the Chicana made the Jumbug advancements believable, right? If that was a three-pointer, right? It's like I would basically I, it, because he played the Chicana, which was already genius. I was able to advance, advance the Junebug up to four advancements, right? And that made it look like I was going for, you know, the three-point agenda, right? But if I had done, you know, if he had not played the Chicana and not run, I couldn't have advanced that because it would not have been a believable as an agenda because I would have just won the game on that turn. Right? I would have won the game if that was an agenda, and he didn't play Chicana. So because he didn't play Chicana, it allowed me to over-advance the Junebug while still making it look like an agenda. Oh, that was so good. Oh, am I glad I played Junebug there. <laughs> I was thinking about playing the agenda there. But, oof, he had a way out. He had a way to get into that. Sir. I guess I could have rezzed the Chimera, and it would have kept him out um, if it was the agenda. Right? Yeah, if it was the agenda... I could have spent the two to res the Chimera. That was the last click. Code gate, he's not at, he's not in. And then next turn, take a credit advance score. Um, oh yeah, so I guess I could have won uh, either way if that was the agenda. But oh man, the Junebug win is so much more satisfying. So much more satisfying. Oh yeah. Uh, I wonder what he would have seen in R&D. Because he could have run R&D on that last turn. Um, instead of running the remote. Mm. I wonder what was there. Wow. Such a good game of Netrunner. All right. Sorry for cheating again. I'm, I'm going to go and uh, you know, do whatever a cheater is supposed to do uh, to uh, repent and whatnot. But I hope that we entertaining games, uh, despite flaws... <laughs> Worst mistakes have been made, but mistakes were made. Like running into a Junebug that was a fast four times.